Now we're going to take a look at the logistic equation, which is important on its own, and it's also a good case study for how we analyze these kinds of problems. The logistic equation can model a number of different things, but here we're going to let x of t be the number of individuals in a particular population. And it's going to be a real number, so non-integer values are allowed, which means you would have to take this with a grain of salt for small populations. Now the simplest thing to assume is that per individual there's a constant net rate of birth minus death. That's sort of a net growth rate per capita. And symbolically that means that 1 over x dx dt is a constant a. Well, obviously the solutions to that are exponential, either exponential growth or exponential decay. That's not very realistic. The next step up the realism scale would be to account somehow for the fact that there are finite resources. Exponential growth forever is not possible. So now we're going to assume a per capita growth rate which decreases due to competition as x increases. And a linear function is the simplest way to make that decrease. When we rewrite that, we get x prime equals ax minus bx squared, where a and b are constants. And this is known as the logistic equation. We're going to write this in a different form. It's a little bit more convenient in some ways. We factor an ax out of both terms. And then we'll rename the ratio a over b to be capital K. K is an important constant known as the carrying capacity. So both a and k are assumed to be positive parameters. What are the equilibria of this equation? We have f prime as this function of x. That function has two roots at x equals 0 and at x equals the carrying capacity. We can draw a phase line diagram. We mark the fixed points in there at 0 and k. And then f is just a downward opening parabola. When we look at increase and decrease, it becomes clear that the fixed point at k is stable and the fixed point at the origin is unstable. The logistic equation has a pretty simple solution. It's autonomous, so it is therefore also separable. In order to integrate this mess on the left, we'll have to do a partial fraction decomposition. The function has poles at 0 and k. We'll clear out the denominators.
When we put in x equals 0, we find that a equals 1. When we put in x equals k, we find that b equals negative 1. So we put in that partial fraction decomposition. Now we can integrate both sides. On the left we get a natural log. After some more manipulations and substituting with an initial condition to find the C, we can get an explicit solution in this form. The solution tells us one interesting thing. Since the parameters are positive, if we take the limit as t goes to infinity, that exponential goes to 0, and the solution goes to k. The long-term fate of solutions is the carrying capacity. That's more than the stability analysis told us. We can sketch the solutions. The carrying capacity is the asymptotic limit. If we start with a small population, we get a sort of S-shaped curve, or what's called a sigmoidal curve. All the other solutions are attracted to the carrying capacity as well. Another way to make the model more realistic is to add in the effects of a predator. So the thinking here is that the rate of change in the population is logistic minus some predation function. There are lots of things you could choose for predation, and you'd probably want to do some experiments. But as a simple model, we could take this function, which increases with x but saturates out. In other words, as x gets large, the amount of predation stops at 1 rather than just continuing to grow forever. This still has an equilibrium at 0. If we factor that out, then the other equilibria can be thought of as the intersection of these two functions. The function on the right doesn't actually depend on any parameters. And it looks something like this. The function on the left is a linear function that decreases from a to 0 at k. So there might be just one intersection of these two. Or, depending on k, if it's larger, there could be three intersections. So those intersections are all new equilibrium values. We have these two eventualities. If k is small enough, then the phase line diagram looks like this. There are two equilibrium solutions. Clearly, the origin is unstable, and the other one is stable. But if k is larger, so we had three intersections of those curves, then we have four total equilibria. What happens is that second hump of the white curve now crosses the x-axis.
And when we fill in the increase and decrease, it's clear that the fixed points alternate between unstable and stable.